So your MRI is stable, and the neurologist is telling you that your neuro exam is unchanged. Then why are you worse? Why are you having more trouble with the litmus test of life? My name is Aaron Boster. I'm an MS neurologist in Columbus, Ohio, and in this video, we're going to tackle that exact question. Why am I worse? Don't turn away, because all of that starts right now. Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. In this video, I want to discuss an extremely common frustration of families impacted by MS. How the hey hey can you have a stable MRI and you have an unchanged neuro exam and yet you're failing the litmus test of life? You're having increased difficulty in living your best life because of MS. How is that possible? In reality, there are multiple different ways that someone impacted by MS can experience worsening or disability. And we don't talk about all of them adequately. In fact, a lot of times I feel as if MS neurologists have blinders on and they're only looking at very specific things. So in this video, I want to unpack this concept a little bit and discuss with you the various ways that someone impacted by MS can experience progression, and more importantly, what we can do to try to turn the ship around. Get out a pen and paper and let's jump in. The first way that we progress in neurological disability is something that we call RAW, or Relapse Associated Worsening. This is a situation where there is a new acute bout of inflammation, where the immune system is attacking the nervous system and causing that part of the brain or spinal cord to literally short circuit and you temporarily lose a neurological function. That's an attack, a flare, an exacerbation, a relapse. And for the sake of this video, let's use an example of, God forbid, an optic neuritis of the left eye, where the optic nerve becomes inflamed and you have pain in your eye and you can't see at all. It's a terrible situation. And fortunately, after steroids and after some period of time, you regain some vision, but you regain some vision, not all vision. Maybe you went from having 20-20 vision to now having 20 over 200 vision. Literally, you're legally blind, although you can still see some stuff. In this example, you have accrued some neurological disability because of incomplete recovery from an attack, raw. And that's one of the ways that you get worse in MS. It's a very, very obvious way. I would even submit you don't need to go see the neurologist to sort that out. And I would also submit that it's not the most common way that people impacted by MS get worse. You can imagine when you're seeing the neurologist and they hear, oh, no attack. And then they see that the MRI has no new spots. And then they do their MS Olympics and say, oh, it's not any different. They may say, you are doing great, honey. Good job. And yet you are still worse. So Clearly, raw is not the only option for progression. Now, before we go and talk about other ways that someone impacted by MS can get worse, I wanna take a second and discuss those tests that I just described. They are simply incomplete. The neuro exam is an ancient tool where we are looking at how fast you can move your fingers and how accurately you can touch my finger and how quickly your eyes can move, et cetera, et cetera. Those are legit neurological tests, but they're arcane and they're insensitive. And they're not perfect at picking up problems with multiple sclerosis. I want to give you an example of back when I was in training. I worked in Detroit where there's lots of car manufacturers. And I saw a gentleman in clinic. And when he came into clinic, he said, I'm really frustrated today because you're going to tell me I'm okay and I'm not. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, you're going to have me do that little walk that you have me do, and you're going to check my strength, and you're going to tell me that there's nothing wrong. And yet, I know that something's wrong, because part of my job is I have to climb up a ladder, and then I have to walk across a catwalk to look down on the factory. And I have to do that every day, and I can barely climb up the ladder, and I can barely walk on this tight little catwalk, and your testing isn't going to pick that up. And you know what? He was right. I examined him and his exam looked gorgeous and he had had an MRI and it looked good and he had not had an attack. And I was in fellowship at the time and my mentor and I both said, look pretty good to me. And he left frustrated. Now here's the kicker. 
He came back and I saw him over time. Two years later, we could finally see the difficulties that he was having with walking. He was a him expert. He knew that he was having trouble and our neurological testing wasn't good enough to pick it up. Raw is one of the ways that we can have worsening in the setting of MS and our testing isn't always awesome. But I wanna shift our attention to a couple other ways that we can have disability which are not so obvious. The second thing I like to discuss is a term called PIRA, or progression independent from relapse activity. This is a situation where your neurological exam is slowly getting worse, but you haven't had an attack. Now, back in the ancient days of yesteryear, we used to think that that could only occur during so-called secondary progressive MS. We used to think that in the beginning of the disease, People have attacks and then they recover. And then at some magical point in time, they progress in their neurological disability. And we call this relapsing MS, and we call this secondary progressive MS, which is a bunch of hogwash. The reality is that people impacted by MS can have attacks and they can have PIRA. And it's not just the so-called second half of the disease. If we look carefully, we can actually see that people are having PIRA as early as the first several years of the disease process. Now this can be really tricky and frustrating because they're getting worse independent from an attack. They're getting worse independent from new spots on the MRI. And you may be asking yourself, well, Aaron, how's that possible? It's possible for a couple different reasons, but one of the ways I'd like to explain it to you is thinking about those MRI spots. What is an MRI spot? It's an area of brain damage. It's an area where the immune system caused inflammation and damaged some of the cells in the noggin, in the supercomputer. And your body did its very best job of trying to rewire, but there's still an area of damage. And as you age, each year you get older and your brain gets older, those areas wear out faster than the rest of your brain. I'm gonna use an example. Let's pretend that I had some shotgun and I blew a hole in the wall behind me. So now there's a big honking hole in that wall and we opt not to repair it. If we fast forward time 20 years to where this building is older and all the materials in the building have gotten older, which wall falls first? The one with the structural damage. Now take that analogy and apply it to damage in the brain. As one ages, the old areas of injury can wear out and the human being can start to experience progression of neurological disability in the absence of new events. And unfortunately, this is, I would submit to you, a more common way that people impacted by MS can get worse. I think it is super important that we recognize this for several reasons. Number one, it's real. Number two, it's in keeping with the human being's experience. Number three, if we don't identify it, there's no way that we're going to be able to intervene to try to treat it. Now, I do wanna point out before we move on to other topics, that some of our newer MS medicines can impact PIRA. Not amazingly so, but they absolutely can slow PIRA down. I also wanna share with you that there are very exciting drugs that are under development where we hope to be able to target PIRA better. Now, I've listed two ways that you can get worse in MS, raw, and PIRA, but there are a couple other ways that I want to tackle with you. So let's now address those. Hey, real quick before we go on, do me a favor. If you found some value in this video, would you give it a thumbs up? And also, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Thank you. Thus far in our discussion, we've talked about RAW and we've talked about PIRA, two ways that someone impacted by MS can get worse, but those aren't the only two ways. So I wanted to cover two more before we wrap up. I wanna talk about chronic symptoms. So symptoms are things that suck and symptoms can change over time. I'll use an example of spasticity. So there's a lot of videos on this channel about spasticity. And so if that's a new concept to you, I'll throw a link up above and you can watch videos on the topic later. But in very brief, spasticity is a situation where the muscles are no longer playing nicely together. When you're trying to move your arm this way and this muscle didn't get the memo and it doesn't relax. So this muscle's trying to go this way and this muscle's trying to go this way and you have a tug of war. 
And that results in a lot of ouchy yaya. That results in spasms. That can result in cramps. And it can result in a limb that is hard to bend. And spasticity is unfortunately a very common symptom in the setting of multiple sclerosis. Now, things can change over time, and symptoms can wax and wane. I practice neurology here in the great state of Ohio, where it gets freaking cold in the winter, and spasticity, as an example, worsens when it's cold outside. So I can have a patient who has very minimal spasticity during the summer months. And as summer turns to fall, and as fall turns to winter, and it starts to slowly get colder outside, they can have increasing difficulties in moving their leg. They can have increasing difficulties with spasms and cramps. They can even start to have changes in the way that they walk and they may fall. In their life experience, they're getting worse. Something is wrong, but it's not because of an attack where they didn't recover. And it's not because of progression of neurological disability. It's because a given symptom has intensified. This is very important to identify because we can easily treat neurological symptoms. In the example of spasticity, there are a host of things that we can do to help that human being walk more safely. Stretching, heat, massage, hydration, medicines like baclofen, medicines like Xanaflex, Botox injections. I can go on for quite some time. My point is, if we can identify a symptom that sucks, then we can target it and make it better. And that's an important thing for us to keep in mind. There's a fourth way that people impacted by MS can get worse, and it's not always straightforward or obvious. My mentor used to say, Aaron, sometimes nature's too generous, and you can have more than one bad thing going on. The fourth way that people impacted by MS can get worse is from things outside of MS which absolutely impact the quality of their life. And I'll give you an example. Fatigue is a monster in multiple sclerosis. And fatigue can make almost every aspect of life more challenging. And many people impacted by MS have pathologic fatigue from the disease. But that is not the only way that you can experience fatigue. For example, if you wake up and you don't feel refreshed, if you wake up with a headache, if your bed partner tells you that you snore and that you sometimes wake yourself up um, with apneic episodes, you may be suffering from fatigue because of, in this example, obstructive sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is very, very common. And again, sometimes nature's too generous. And if you show me someone impacted by MS who also has sleep apnea, I'll show you someone who is struggling because they're not getting restorative sleep. We can try to target MS fatigue all day long and we will not be successful until we look outside of multiple sclerosis and we identify, hey, this guy's got sleep apnea, and then we need to do something about it. Maybe we do a CPAP machine, which helps keep their airways open, helps them get adequate oxygenation while they're sleeping, and helps them get restorative sleep. The result is that they don't wake up with fatigue, and the quality of their life, the quality of their day, the quality of their neurological status skyrockets up. And so I don't want to be so narrow-minded to think that the only thing going on with a human being could be multiple sclerosis. I think as clinicians, we need to have our eyes open and consider all possibilities and literally sometimes think outside of the MS box. You know, the biggest way that you can help this channel grow is by watching another video. So if you'd like to up your game, click the video that's on your screen right now. And until my next Monday morning video or my next monthly live stream, or even better yet, the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.